July 1, 1983, the St. Regis Falls teacher's labor contract with the district expired. After months of failed negotiations between the Teachers Association and the district, in the frigid temperatures of January 1984, things started to heat up. St. Regis Falls is a small northern New York community nestled in the foothills of the Adirondacks, where the school is the center of the community. In 1984, St. Regis Falls employed 32 teachers and enrolled around 450 students K-12. The small, intimate climate of the school and the community were at the crux of the dispute that led teachers to walk out of the classroom. Teachers wanted contract language that guaranteed a maximum class size at 28 students, but the district contended that a class size limit was not a mandatory subject of bargaining. The teachers held tight to the conviction that exceeding a class size of 28 would make meaningful instruction impossible. Strengthening their argument was the well-publicized recommendation of the New York State Commissioner of Education that class size should be limited to 25. Teachers at St. Regis Falls told of third grade classes with more than 30 students and high school classes that exceeded 45. The district countered the position of the Teachers Association, saying it was nothing more than a ploy to protect jobs. The administration and the school board also claimed that the Teachers Association was trying to usurp the power to determine staffing by negotiating that power into the terms and conditions of employment. Terms and conditions which could be subject to binding arbitration if violated. This argument was adamantly held by the district even though the district had agreed to a supplemental letter to pass contracts that limited class size. The terms of those supplemental letters expired June 30, 1983. All class size proposals tendered by the district excluded the right of the union to submit the matter to binding arbitration. January 27, 1984, after months of stalemate, all 32 members of the St. Regis Falls Teachers Association walked out. The district superintendent, Michael Hunsinger, called the strike action despicable. Immediately an injunction was filed against the teachers and demanded they return to their classrooms. Under the provisions of the Taylor Law, public employees enjoy the rights to bargain collectively but are prohibited from strike action. Violation of the Taylor Law seemed to promise expensive fines and jail time. Two leaders of the teachers' union were quickly identified by the court as those who would face a jail sentence. Marilyn James, the association president, and John Weaver, the treasurer. Although the Taylor Law is not intended to be punitive, nor to allow for automatic injunction, the teachers at St. Regis Falls all face the two-for-one penalty. This penalty means that for every one day on strike, two days' wage would be lost. Ultimately, this penalty cost the teachers $152,000 in lost wages. Many teachers received paychecks after the strike for only 60 cents. The wages the teachers lost were considered a windfall for the district. Over the six weeks of the strike, the battle between the district and the association was fought in the courtroom and in the media. In court, the association's attempt to show cause for the strike was denied, and it was ruled that the teachers must return to the classroom. Despite that, the 32 members of the St. Regis Falls Teachers Association defied the court's injunction order and unanimously decided to continue the strike. The teachers were holding out a few more weeks until their next court date, all the time hoping to negotiate a settlement with the district. In sub-zero temperatures and through a blizzard, the 32 St. Regis Falls teachers and their North Country Union brothers and sisters, as well as sympathetic community members and even students, picketed in front of the school. Marilyn James, president of the St. Regis Falls Teachers Association, mobilized support for the strike effort by holding several informational forums and by taking the teacher's message to the media. Her efforts were a success. Community members understood the teacher's position. They too believed that their children deserved a quality education and that limiting class size was an important ingredient to achieving that goal. Few community members understood the position of the district. Legalistic talk of non-mandatory subjects of bargaining 
was not meaningful and fell on deaf ears. During the strike, the invaluable skill of the professional and certified teachers was felt. Reports of chaos in the school that was then being run by a team of often uncertified substitute teachers were frequent and sent fear throughout the community. With the community on their side and the popular sentiment opposing putting the teachers in jail, the St. Regis Falls Teachers Association and the district moved toward a compromise that would end the stalemate in contract negotiations and end the strike. After marathon negotiation sessions, the district agreed to bargain on class size and promised it would also do so in 1986 when contract negotiations would resume. But the district kept its authority to determine what it considered to be a reasonable class size. Ultimately, the district and the association agreed that the class size limit would be 28 students in most areas and 35 students in special areas. And a committee of teachers and board members was created to make recommendations if classes go over that limit. Both sides were satisfied with the compromise. Michael Hunsinger, district superintendent, reflected in the end, it is non-mandatory as a bargaining item, of course, but the district had agreed to negotiate on it. We still don't have to agree to any class size. We've just agreed to negotiate on the topic. March 10th, 1984, the Faculty Association unanimously ratified the contract and the strike was over. The teachers had succeeded in protecting the educational environment, the terms and conditions of their work, which of course are always mandatory subjects of bargaining. The class size clause is still in the St. Regis Falls Teachers Labor Agreement today. The lessons of the St. Regis Falls Teachers Strike resonate today in the North Country and everywhere there are workers. United, we win. It was the strength of the whole that won the strike. All teachers agreed on the importance of the conditions of their work. All teachers agreed that they should be partners in creating the learning environment in which they practice their craft. It was the only way to serve their profession and to justly serve their students and community. Today, NICE members in the North Country and around the state continue the struggle to negotiate fair contracts that provide fair compensation for the profession and that also recognize the conditions required to deliver a quality education to students. The vision of courageous pioneers like Albert Schenker and Tom Hobart has given NYSET a seat at the table and has created a partnership with decision makers at local, state, and national levels. Teachers are able to share in determining the terms and conditions of work. That's a right that the St. Regis Falls Teachers Association fought to protect. NYSET members today still have more battles to fight to preserve what has been gained and to work toward greater labor protections for all. Our mission is social justice and our journey never ends. All members can help by participating in Vote Cope, which secures our access to decision makers at all levels of government. Members can walk the walk by educating others about NYSET's Labor Religion Coalition Fair Trade Project. At the local level, members can do so many things. They can serve in the local's leadership team. They can offer their talents as community advocates through political action. And most simply and most importantly, all members can learn their labor contract and help to ensure that the contract is upheld. Certainly the St. Regis Falls teacher strike teaches us how difficult contract negotiations can be. By risking it all and walking out of their classrooms, the teachers at St. Regis Falls taught the greatest lesson they could. Their lesson is that united we win.
blood shall run. There can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? But the union makes us strong.